Hello, my name is Samuel Keith Harris, and welcome back to another episode of Morning Devotionals. Let's start our day with Jesus. Father, I thank you that we can come into your presence, Lord, and read your holy word. We want to be changed into the very image of Jesus so that we can bring you glory, God. For you said, when we bear much fruit, that's when you are glorified, and that's when we prove to be your true disciples. So be glorified, God, and produce fruitfulness through us. In Jesus' precious name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 10, and I'm going to be in verse 24. I'm going to read quite a few verses today, and I'm going to be starting in Matthew 10, 24. The scripture says, Students are not greater than their teacher, and slaves are not greater than their master. So if Jesus is teaching us, we're never going to be greater than Jesus. But it is enough to be just like Jesus. And it says students are to be like their teacher. Slaves are to be like their master. So we're to be like Jesus. And since I, the master of the household, have been called the prince of demons, the members of my household will be called by even worse names. They call Jesus the prince of demons. They... So they're going to call us, Jesus said, even worse names. So I wanted to get on here and be inspirational, but I want to equip you as a true disciple of Jesus. If you're truly going to bring glory to Christ, you're going to have to bear the insults of men. And so it's good to be like Jesus, but when you're like Jesus, you're going to be insulted. When you're like Jesus, you're going to be hated. Even if you don't say a word and you walk in a room and you have eyes that are full of purity and the light of God, people are going to be offended. Why? Because the glory of God that's upon you stirs up demons that are on other people. And so the scripture says in verse 26, But don't be afraid of those who threaten you, for the time is coming when everything that is covered will be revealed, and all that is secret will be made known to all. And that is a portion of scripture that should sober us. Whatever you're saying in secret, whatever you're doing in secret, it will be revealed. If you want the sin in other people's lives to be revealed, God, I can't wait till they're revealed because I know that there's something wrong in their life. And then you have things going on in your life. You, you want to make sure you're purified and then pray for people. Because there's a day coming, it says, where everything will be made known to all. Secrets will be made known. What I tell you now in the darkness, shout abroad when daybreak comes. What I whisper in your ear, shout from the housetops for all to hear. So whatever the Lord speaks to you as you're seeking him, he wants you to take to other people. Freely you've received, so freely give. I've been changed by Jesus. He, he's completely changed me and, and he's formed himself in me. So I go tell other people about Christ because I've seen what Christ has done. He's given me a message of, I've been freed from sin, so I'm going to go preach so other people can be freed from the power of sin and find their desire and satisfaction is in Christ Jesus. So let's go down to verse 28. The scripture says, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. And most people are afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. So God can destroy your soul and he can destroy your body and he can do that in hell and he can do that forever. So he's saying comparatively, what they can do is nothing. They can't touch your soul. Verse 29. And then he reassures us. He says, what is the price of two sparrows? One copper coin? But not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. How tender is the Lord that not a single sparrow falls to the ground and God doesn't know about it. But his eye is even on the sparrow. How much more on us? It says, and the very hairs on your head are all numbered. God knows how many numbers of hair that you have. That's how close that he knows you. But you want to make sure that you know him and that you have union together. Today's the day to pursue God, to find your identity in God, and to realize that he's the only source of satisfaction that can be sustained. It says, so don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. 
But everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. So we must make sure that we don't deny Christ, that we don't deny him by the way we live, that we don't, when people ask us about why we're a Christian, we should have an answer because we've been spending time with him. If you're not spending time with God alone in the secret place, in the word of God, hearing his tender whisper, not talking about audibly, but in the scriptures, just the assurance that rises in your heart. You're not gonna have any confidence before men to speak because you haven't seen anything. Um, I love what the disciples say. They say, we can't stop talking about what we've seen and heard. The, if you wanna be a true example of Christ before men, if you don't have to take this big evangelism course. I'll tell you what to do see and hear what god is saying spend time with him alone and then you'll come out of the prayer closet not being able to contain what god has shown you and you'll be speaking about what you've seen and what you've heard it says don't imagine in verse 34 don't imagine that i came to bring peace to the earth now this is jesus he says don't imagine that i came to bring peace to the earth i came not to bring peace so you might be deceived into thinking that Christ came to bring peace. Oh, he's coming to, de to destroy the wicked and establish a kingdom of peace. But he didn't come to bring peace now. He says, but I came to bring a sword. Verse 35, I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Your enemies will be right in your own household. Praise God. One... One, when it mentions that in Luke, it talks about how two will be for the Lord and three against the Lord, or three will be for the Lord and two will be against the Lord. When you get saved, you didn't get saved into a relationship with Christ where people are going to love that you know Jesus now. Your pure conduct is going to reveal to your family and your friends that their conduct is not pure. They're going to start judging you for saying you think you're holier than thou. They're going to start telling you, you think I'm going to hell, don't you? And you might, your heart might be broken over the fact that they are on their way to hell, okay? It's not an easy road. When you give your life to Jesus and people that you love don't know him, like genuinely, they're in your household, strife starts to rise up, but you've got to understand that's the will of God. You've got to have confidence to understand that you are a representative of Christ in that home and you can bring mighty deliverance to your family if you'll pray, if you'll stay the course, and if you'll live obedient to the word of God. God may save your family. Praise Jesus. It says, if you love your father and mother more than me, you love me. You are not worthy of being mine. So if you, if you love your family more than you love Jesus, you're not worthy of being Jesus's. It says, if you love your son or daughter more than me, you're not worthy of being mine. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you can refuse to take up your cross. Nobody's going to refuse prosperity. Nobody's going to refuse all these wonderful gifts of God. But people are going to refuse denying themselves and living a crucified life and suffering for doing good. It says, if you refuse to take up your cross and follow Christ, you're not worthy of being his. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. If, if, if you want to cling to your life, cling to your pleasures, cling to what satisfies you rather than what satisfies God, then you're going to lose your life. But if you give up your life for Jesus, you will find it. Now, it is the greatest pleasure to serve Christ. It's the place of joy and fulfillment and peace but it comes at a cost. It is painful at times because people don't want to hear the gospel. The Bible says preach the gospel whether it's favorable or not, whether people want to hear it or they don't. I'm not telling you to be arrogant. I'm not telling you to, to be violent. What I am telling you is in humility, seek the Lord. You will find him there. You will shine with the fruits of the Spirit and the enemy does not like that. And so he will raise all hell against you to get you to cave and stop being obedient to the Lord and to turn aside to wasting all your time on entertainment rather than seeking God and seeing people saved from an eternal fate of hell. Father, I thank you that we could come into your word today. Thank you for speaking. God, you're wonderful to us. Lead us throughout our day today. 
and be glorified in our lives. May the fruits of the Spirit overflow within us, love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness, faithfulness and self-control. In Jesus' name, and may people be touched by our lives. It's in Jesus' name that I pray, and everybody said amen. Well, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Morning Devotionals, and I will see you next time.